Good morning. Welcome to chapel. Thank you to Maddie Johnson for her message this morning, and thank you to the Ecology of East Africa group for their leadership and hospitality. I invite you to stand for the opening greeting. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Today's gospel is from Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James, and Salome brought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they set out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maddie Johnson. I just graduated from Concordia in December and have been working full-time at the Career Center since. Um, so I just want to share my message with you. I come from a privileged upbringing. Suburbia was my playground, and I explored the outdoors without fear of persecution or violence. I lived in a big house, but it didn't fulfill the American dream exactly. There was no picket fence, and I had a cross-eyed cat instead of a dog. <laughs> I rarely encountered poverty, and 95% of my high school class graduated. My parents supported me through college, and also will support me in my future educational endeavors. In May of 2013, I traveled to Tanzania with the Ecology of East Africa group, and this is the first time I encountered true poverty. It was a biology field course, which basically is just another way to say adventure. We climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, went on two and a half weeks of safari, snorkeled in the Indian Ocean, and rescued a turtle's nest. Despite the thrill of these new experiences, the poverty, inequality, and different cultural practices stuck with my soul the most. I remember walking through Arusha, the capital of Tanzania, and smelling burning garbage because Tanzania does not have a sanitation system like America's. I remember visiting huts of the Maasai people, one of the many tribes in Tanzania, and feeling shocked at the small size of the huts and the dirt floors. 
But most importantly, I remember the joy I experienced at the Maasai Girls School, forming relationships with the students. During our trip, we had the opportunity to spend time at the Maasai Girls Lutheran Secondary School in Monduli, Tanzania. The school was founded by a Kabar alumnus in 1995, and it is a boarding school for girls from villages that are generally in isolated regions. When we entered the school, we were greeted with illuminated faces of the students who seemed to have genuine joy because of our arrival. I immediately began conversing with some of the students, and one student, Christina, and I hit it off immediately. She was one of the leaders of the group, with a fierce and sassy attitude that I could never mirror exactly. Her laugh was contagious, and she had an intensity in everything she did that reflected her determination. When the biology teacher, John, divided us into groups, Christina protested and insisted on being in my group. That's when I knew I had made a friend. The girls at the school were impressive. When teacher John quizzed them on their biological studies, they were quick to answer, but also excited to answer. Christina explained the flowering plant life cycle perfectly and even provided a hand-drawn diagram to go along with it. As the days continued, I grew closer to Christina, chatting with her about her dreams for the future. That was when she told me that she wanted to be a doctor. She adamantly added that she would not get married until after she became a doctor. She told me this multiple times. At a young age, many girls in Tanzania are sold into marriage right after completing primary school. I thought of myself at age 13. I was in dance class on the V team for volleyball. I wasn't very athletic and had dreams of becoming an actress. That didn't happen. <laughs> marriage wasn't even on my radar. I can't imagine how scared many of these girls are of getting married when they are preoccupied playing with their friends and learning about the world at school. Christina is an inspiration to me because she went against her culture and what her family was telling her to do. She wanted to get married at some point, but not before her ultimate dream of becoming a doctor came true. You may have noticed the Maasai Girls Fund School Fundraiser happening in the atrium this week. It cost $1,000 to support a girl at the school for one year, and at first I wasn't sure if this fundraiser was the best way to help the school. But I began to think, and I realized that despite fear, these girls have a voice. We are not becoming their voice by supporting them. We are walking alongside these girls and empowering them to achieve their goals. In Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went to the tomb to anoint Jesus after his death. They chatted about how the stone would be heavy, and they would probably have to have trouble rolling it away. But when they arrived, the stone in front of the tomb had already been rolled away. A young man in the tomb told them not to be alarmed, and that Jesus, who had been crucified, had risen. The women were understandably terrified and fled the tomb. Verse 8 ends saying that the women said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. But that is where the story is interesting. The women were gripped with trembling fear, but they had to have told someone the good news that Jesus had risen. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the story of the resurrection. These women did not let fear stop them from sharing the good news. Like the girls at the Messiah Girls School, these women had a voice. They shared the news of Jesus and that he came back to life. The beauty of this story is that the good news is for everyone. It is not just for men or for the rich or for those who have the loudest laughs. The good news of Jesus is for everyone and because the women who found his tomb abandoned spread the good news, we have the completed story of Jesus. Christina too did not let fear of being ridiculed by her family stop her from pursuing her dreams of becoming a doctor. Nicholas Kristof, New York Times columnist and co-author of the book Half the Sky with his wife Cheryl Woundoon, argues that in the 19th century, we faced the moral challenge of slavery. In the 20th century, we fought against totalitarianism. And in the 21st century, the biggest human rights violations we face is the struggle for equality for women and their daughters around the world. So I'm asking you to act despite fear. Both the women in Mark and the Maasai girls did not let fear hold them back. 
Join the movement to empower women in the best way you can. If this means sharing the good news of Jesus in local communities or abroad, this is what you should do. If this means you work long hours and donate your money to schools like the Maasai Girls School, this is what you should do. If this means dedicating your life to empowering those less fortunate than you because you believe every person deserves the right to education, health care, and a happy life, go forth and do just that. What I fear the most is that America will stand by idly out of fear and not take action to empower women around the world. Women are the solution to so many of the world's problems. As Melinda Gates just tweeted about, <laughs> If women are educated, they are less likely to die in childbirth. They make sure their children have health care and nutritious meals. Women will get better work prospects and payment for their work, which will allow them to ultimately send their children to school, continuing the cycle of empowerment. So, do not stand by idly in fear. Go and share the good news. Go and empower your neighbor. Go and walk alongside those who have a voice but may need a little help. An old African proverb says, educate our women and they will educate the entire village. I strongly believe this is true. Thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. God of hope and love, we thank you for the Maasai Girls School and for the opportunity for each girl to enrich their life through education. May they continue to grow in knowledge, understanding, and love for the world and you, so that your light may shine through them into their communities and the world. God of light. Hear our prayer. God of opportunities, we pray for all people around the world. May there be a time of peace to the wars being fought. May we work towards increasing education opportunities for children, eliminating hunger, and ending all types of oppression. Guide us with the example of Jesus to bring hope and love to people around the world. God of light. Hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for the leaders of our country, community, and churches. May they, may they at all times and in all places seek to do justice for all people. God of light. Holy God, we lift your name high as we continue our day at Concordia. May our time of learning, fellowship, and work be protected by your spirit. Let your light guide us as we encourage one another to live lives pleasing in your eyes. God of light. Loving God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy I invite you to stand for the blessing. Go now to be God's healing presence in the world, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come to the 
Share the good news. Thanks be to God.